Okay, gang, good morning. Welcome back. Happy Thursday. Today, April 20th, we are going to finish Lesson 23 and do all of Lesson 24. So as a reminder, Lesson 23, which we started at the end of last class, was our first of two days on the quadratic formula. And then this next lesson is our second of two days on the quadratic formula. We'll also talk a little bit about complex numbers today. Um, coming up next week, uh, Tuesday is an ordinary day. Thursday is our fourth and final quest. There was a quest five, but it got deleted by a number of snow days. So this will be our last quest of the semester. Um, you can see here that uh, quest number four covers material on lessons 19 through 24. And today is 24. So at the end of today, that's the end of the material for the quest. So we're doing new stuff Tuesday, but it won't show up on the quest. Um, and also, the uh, final exam is sort of almost around the corner here. So May 16. I think it's about three weeks from now. We're really getting down to it. Any questions on the calendar? Okay, uh, then let's take a look here on 192. So I will remind you uh, that uh, we started uh, at the end of last class this problem right here. We were trying to solve that equation and um, we didn't like that fraction so much. And so our first technique to solve that equation was to clear the fractions. And you can do that because you're allowed to multiply both sides by the same number, any number you want. What was the number that we wanted to multiply by here to get rid of that fraction? It's three, right? That denominator. And so we multiplied both sides by three, which meant every one of these three things by three. And that got us right up here to that uh, negative six X squared minus seven X equals negative three. We're ready to use the quadratic formula, but not quite because we need one side to equal zero. And so we add that three to both sides. So there it is there. And now we're ready to use the quadratic formula. So let's give it a shot. Quadratic formulas are written out here for us. X equals all that stuff. Um, and so I think we made a point of uh, making sure that we recognized what the values of A and B and C were. Remember, A is always the number touching X squared. How much is A? Negative six. B is always the number touching X. Somebody else, how much is B? It's negative seven. I'm glad we're grabbing those negative signs. And then somebody else, C is the number by itself, three or plus three, okay? And so then it's just a matter of plugging all of those numbers into our quadratic formula. I'm gonna do the same thing I did the other class, where I copy the whole quadratic formula, except every time I see an A or B or C, I'm gonna write empty parentheses. And then I think it's going to be really easy for us to fill in this shell with the right numbers. So that is the quadratic formula, but every ABC has become empty parentheses, waiting for us to put the numbers in. Okay, so looking at our quadratic formula, the first symbol is negative B. How much is B? negative seven. So I'm just going to put a negative seven in there and it is true. Those two negatives are going to cancel, but I'm not going to get it wrong. I'm going to get it right in the next step, right? So I've got my negative B. B happens to be a negative number. In the parentheses, it's supposed to be B squared. So this is negative seven squared. And by writing the parentheses, there's no way I'm going to get confused about where that negative sign is. It is inside the parentheses. It is getting squared. Is this going to be negative 49 or positive 49 in our next step? It is positive. Got my parentheses there. All right, next one, minus 4a. How much is a? That's negative 6 times c. c we said was positive 3. And then on the bottom is a 2a, 2 times negative 6. Okay. All right, so in this whole process that we're just starting off here, that right there is the worst uh, the thing will look. Every step from here down is gonna make it look a little bit better than it did before. Okay, so I see negative, negative seven. That's really seven plus or minus square root of negative seven squared. We said before, is that positive 49 or negative 49? That's positive 49. Now I pause and think about the next symbol. It is either going to be a subtract or an add, and I'm not going to write any other negative signs after I make my decision. Just counting the symbols, I've got that subtraction and that negative. That's two of them. Is that a plus or a minus at the end of the day? It is a plus. 
And now I am free to think of all of these three numbers as being positive. I have dealt with the signs. It is going to be plus at the end of the day. So we are doing 4 times 6 times 3. 4 times 6 is 24. 24 times 3 is 72. It's okay if it takes you a moment to do that. You don't need a calculator to do that. You can just write it out. Divided by downstairs, negative 12. And as I promised, it's going to look a little bit better every step from here forward. Equals. Okay, lots of copying. The only thing we're going to simplify at this stage is the thing inside that radical. We're just adding 49 and 72, and we're copying everything else. 7 plus or minus square root of 49 plus 72. And 21 is good. Divided by negative 12. Oftentimes, that is the final answer. But if that square root can be simplified, you are obligated to do so. So this is correct, but it is not completely simplified, and it isn't full credit yet. Um, the square root of 121 happens to be something nice. It's 11. It's 11, right? I mean, sometimes we have to look for a number that goes into that that's a nice, perfect square. But in this case, it's just a perfect square already. So this is one of these rare cases where that radical just disappears entirely, just becomes plain 11 with no square root anymore. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to give you two paths to follow, and there's one that I want you to follow, but I want to show you both here. Okay, the one path that we have seen prior is to take this plus or minus, uh, sorry, to take this fraction and split it into two fractions. So uh, 7 over negative 12 plus or minus what? Okay. 11 over negative 12, right? Just splitting into two fractions. Okay, so we've seen that before. One fraction becoming two. And sometimes that's helpful to us, but in this case, it actually turns out to not be all that helpful. So I'm going to ask you to split this in a different way. Green is correct. Purple is where I want you to go. Remember how plus or minus is really just a shorthand way of saying two different things. Let's write out those two different things separately. Plus or minus really means 7 plus 11 over negative 12. Or what else does it mean? 7 minus 11 over negative 12. Right. So we just split it over the plus or minus by just writing two completely separate things. And now we'll do these separate calculations, and we'll make simplified fractions, and we'll be done. 7 plus 11 on top, that's 18 over negative 12. And we can reduce that. 6 goes into both. So I got a negative 3 halves there. And then over here, 7 minus 11, that's a negative 4 over negative 12. Negative over negative is positive. 4 goes into both, so we just get 1 third. Okay. So those are our two answers. X is 1 third. X is negative 3 halves. What are they the answers of? Well, if you go to the original equation, the one with that fraction in it, and you were to plug in, say, negative 3 halves for both of those x's, the equation would work. Right? Both sides would be the same number. Same thing would happen with 1 third. The equation would work. Okay, now the fact is, the fa uh, since we got nice numbers here, that radical disappearing, it actually means we didn't need the quadratic formula here. If you go back to uh, this equation up here in black, that negative 6x squared minus 7x plus 3 equals 0. Um, factoring is often our goal in terms of solving quadratic equations. We always have the three kinds of factoring and always in this order. Greatest common factor, dots, and then box. What is the greatest common factor of those three terms? It's 1, which is not helpful. Dots, is that a difference of two squares? Mm -mm. Not two terms, not a difference, not perfect squares. So box is the only final technique. And oftentimes the box method does not work, and the quadratic formula is there to bail you out. 
But in this case, the box method actually would have worked. If we had spent some time doing the box method, we would have gotten the same answer. Let me uh, demonstrate here. So can somebody remind me? What's that equation? Negative 6x squared but minus 7x and then a plus 3. It's that. And so I'm going to say dot, 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 box, dot, dot, dot. And then I'm going to write down, I think are the answers here. Um, 3x minus 1 and negative 2x uh, plus no, minus 3. Let's try that. So let's see if uh, I got this right. Uh, we know that uh, we can always check by doing our lobster claw or distribute or foil, whatever we call it, right? So let's just check. Uh, first times first. Negative 6x squared, that's good. That's what I was after. Uh, outers. Minus 9x. Inners. Positive 2x. And then finally, last plus 3, and you can combine these two terms in the middle and get minus 7x. So did I factor this thing over there correctly? I did. And if this thing here, and so I'm, I've hidden all the details. The box is a, you know, like a three or four minute process. It would take time. But assuming you can take those three or four minutes and get these factors, how do we solve, how do we finish solving this equation from here? Remember, we've got two numbers multiplied and you got zero. What has to be true about one of those numbers? Zero. One of them has to be zero. And so then we write two simpler equations. Either the 3x minus 1 is zero or the other thing, negative 2x minus 3 is zero, right? And then we solve this equation by first doing what? Adding 1 and then doing what? Dividing by the 3, and so you add 1, and you divide by 3, and you get x equals 1 third. Hey, x equals 1 third is exactly one of the quadratic formula answers. How do we solve this other equation? <clears throat> First, we add the 3, and then we divide by negative 2. Negative 3 over 2 is exactly the other answer the quadratic formula gave. So um, if the thing factors, oftentimes that's the simplest way to solve the equation. But the quadratic formula will not lead you astray. It, it's going to work, even if you could have factored from the beginning. Okay. All right. So uh, why don't you jump to the activity on the next page? And then at some point, I will uh, bring us all together and we'll tackle the, uh, the demo for the, the next section.